we'll be talking today about matte foundation design. So this is a brief summary of what we're talking about today. So we'll start with an introduction and some historical perspectives on how matte foundations have previously been designed because it very much informs how we handle matte foundations today. Then we'll talk about critical soil properties, uh, soil parameters, subgrade modules, things that are critical to designing the, a matte foundation. And that will then tie into a discussion on soil structure interaction and how it relates to matte foundation design. After that, we will have our first five minute break and Q&A session. Then we'll get into a discussion on proportioning preliminary design, load combinations, and analysis techniques. After that, we'll take our final five-minute break, Q&A session, and then we'll discuss aspects of design, detailing, and constructability. So just as an introduction, it's important to recognize that map foundation design has advanced significantly in the last 25 years. And there's a couple key reasons. Uh, one is just advanced analysis procedures. The, the use of finite element analysis obviously is commonplace now, but 25 years ago was, was not as common. And that has substantially changed our design procedures. Um, understanding and analysis methods for plate mechanics has advanced. And understanding of material properties has advanced as, as we and allow us to substantially fine-tune our design from what we had traditionally done in the past. Yet, it's really important to recognize that there's still so many unknowns when we're dealing with map foundations. Mo most critically, soil properties. We have uh, much more substantial geotechnical investigations these days than traditionally we may have done. However, you still, there's, there's just inherent unknown about what's happening below grade and the different stratification. This this figure here shows a section cut through the Bay Area um, and, and just shows how, how substantially the subgrade conditions can vary across um, a region. Another substantial unknown is demand levels, uh, specifically related to seismic demands. M you know, many of our buildings that we've designed, taller buildings, for example, haven't truly been tested uh, for a design level or, or maximum considered earthquake demand. And so there's, there is a question of what is the appropriate demand level to size, to design your map foundation for, which is still considered an unknown. Another unknown is shear size effects. Now I've listed it as an unknown, but it is actually something that has been known uh, for about 80 years. We've actually known that there's such a thing as size effects for shear. Uh, there's there's been testing from the 1940s that has shown that there's however there's just been limited testing on uh, concrete sections the size of map foundations just a few years ago some some more testing has been done that has informed what shear size effect really means to us in the design of map foundations but the the building codes ACI specifically are still reacting to that information um, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we get into the design section. So briefly, what is a map foundation? It's, it's a specific type of shallow foundation that uses bearing capacity of the soil to transmit building loads to the subgrade. Uh, a map may encompass all or part of a building's footprint and is commonly used in soil or loading conditions that lead to differential settlement concerns. And many times we do use a map foundation uh, in, co in conjunction with a bathtub system where you're trying to create a waterproof basement below the water table. Um, in that case, the, the map foundation creates the, the critical bottom portion of the bathtub. So regarding historical perspectives, um, it's important to, to look back at these historical procedures and see how they handled soil structure interaction um, and understanding of the rigid body assumptions that they made in those analysis methods and also just an understanding of how those methods were limited by computational methods. However, many of these methods are still very applicable to what we do today just in terms of initial proportioning or, or checking the design to make sure it's, it's uh, appropriate. So I'll, I'll break the discussion into two separate time periods. Really, there's a pre-1980s and a post-1980s period. The pre-1980s was um, described in the ACI 336 report from 1966, which describes a couple uh, interesting things. One is that they use an envelope and simplified the soil pressure distribution to design a mat foundation. Many times they started with a uniform soil pressure distribution and then they would do a varying soil pressure distribution with a 2.0 factor. And when I say 2.0 factor, that means, for example, the bearing pressure at the middle of the mat would be half of the bearing pressure at the, the perimeter of the mat or vice versa, depending on the soil type. The bearing pressure at the perimeter of the mat may be half of the bearing pressure at the middle of the mat. And that's what this figure here 
as, as trying to give you an example of. Most of the time these were designed as inverted slabs, which is actually not different really than what we do today. But it was a more simplified design since they weren't using finite element analysis. They would use design shears and moments with flat slab coefficients out of ACI 318, for example. Many times they would use the same reinforcement top and bottom for simplicity. But there's a recognition that this was always an approximate result. One of the limiting factors here is that there was no ability to accurately predict settlement. 